Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you my experience with all this liquid AIO coming from Lianli, which are released not too long ago. They are known as the Galahad 2 Trinity. It comes with three configurations, which is the Galahad 2 Trinity, the Galahad 2 Trinity SL in Trinity, and the Galahad 2 Trinity Performance. Now, before I begin, I'd like to thank Lianli to have provided all this liquid AIO for me to share with you. And to block soda to have done the arrangement on the delivery. Let's begin. Starting off with the physical appearance of all this Galahad 2, be whether you are choosing the Trinity, the Trinity SL Infinity or the Trinity Performance, all this comes with two colors which is black or white. Now as for the radiator variant, please take note, for 240 and 360, you can only find it on the Trinity or the Trinity SL Infinity. Else for the performance, you only have 360. The Galaha 2 Trinity comes with standard ARGB fans, which has a measurement of 120mm by 120mm. And the thickness of the fans itself is 25mm. The thickness on the radiator, in fact, is 27mm. So if you add up the fan with the radiator, the thickness is 52mm. And as mentioned to you, the uh, Trinity does comes with a variant of 360. Now for the 240 variant, from here to here is at a measurement of 275mm. If you are using the 360 variant, the length will be 395mm. And the width from here to here is 120mm. Looking at the side where the tube are connected to this part, as you notice, the butt is 45 degree angled and there is a purpose for this which I'm going to mention to you later. Now speaking about the butt itself, they are swivable, be it the uh, bottom section or the top section. See? Now when you're swivering this butt over here, right, make sure that you hold on the butt and to hold on the metal clip over here and to swivel. Reason for this, right, if you only hold the tube and to swivel, right, you might break the tube or to break the butt. And as usual, excellent job by Lenny. These are nicely braided, the tube itself. Over at this end over here, the palm area, these are swivable. Now, for the size of the palm itself, be it from the top to the bottom, the left and right, these are measuring 73 millimeter in length. Now, the height of the uh, palm itself, right, from the top to the uh, bottom cold plate itself is measuring 70 mm in height. Next will be the tubing itself. Now, Lenny have done a brilliant job in enhancing or improving this Galahad version 2. Reason being right, the tube has been widened. Now, the thickness of the internal tube itself right now is 7 mm thick as compared to the previous generation Galahad, or should I say the original Galahad? Now, the original Galahad is 5.8mm and this is 7mm, so we can see the difference. Let me just zoom in, see? Now the reason for this is, there will be more fluid going through the uh, radiator to your pump and most of the heat will be transferred out to the pump and back to the radiator. So this is why they have thickened this and this does the impact on the thermal results. Of course, you will get better thermal results. Now, earlier on, I mentioned to you regarding about this uh, angled 45 degree butt over here. Why is this so? If you are using an MTX case coming from ASUTEC AP201 or JASPO D31 or the D41, whereby you have the power supply located at the front, and this is the top of the case, this is the front of the case, now, if you were to mount this Trinity to the case itself, right, since it's a MATX, it's pretty compact. Look at the hose. You don't really need to bend the hose at all. And you can just sit in place, not a problem. Else, if you were to use the original Galahad, which is this, take a look what happened. See, you will need to give space for it to bend. See? So wide. Okay, let me just show you here. See? Is this wide? And what if the uh, PSU is going nearer to the radiator? 
look at the hose, it's bending drastically and this might restrict the water flow from the radiator to the pump. I'm going to give you a better view on how this uh, gradual bend right, is good when you use cases like, as mentioned, the ASUTEC AP201 or the uh, Jespo D31 or D41. Now, see? So imagine this is the front of the case itself and this is the top where you mount the radiator. So having to say this right, even if you were to tuck this right near to the uh, radiator itself, this tube here are um, bent gradually, not so drastic as in like, you know, having a hard bend. And this will not restrict the uh, water flow from your um, radiator to the pump and back to the radiator. It's a smooth transaction and this definitely will help thermal results again. So this is one thing why Lini have actually designed a 45 degree angle. Before I talk about the fans on the Trinity itself, now if you purchase any of the Galahad 2 Trinity, be it the Trinity, the Trinity, SL Infinity or the Performance, all these fans are pre-installed on the radiator itself. Now on the uh, Trinity itself, these are the standard ARGB fans and the specs are written over here. They are 12 volt DC, having the drawing amperage of 0 0.36 ampere, and the lowest RPM is 300, and the maximum RPM is 2450. Now, for the ARGB lighting, it's drawing 5 volt, and at an amperage of 0 0.34 ampere to each fence. There's a very unique way how they need this fence here. As you can see here, right, I've deliberately taken off this housing here which is fastened by two screws as you can see over here now when it's fastened on the uh, fan frame itself right it looks like this so i did really taken out this so that to show you see they have done a daisy chain within the uh, this cap itself and you'll be able to insert this to this housing and you do that, do that right, you see, it's all hidden nicely. And when you fasten the two screw right, you'll be in place. And of course, both sides of all the fans is with rubber grommets, the uh, anti-vibration rubber pads. Same goes to here. And as you can see, right, I've deliberately taken this housing off. Before you take this housing right, you need to remove off this rubber grommet. So this is to place it back in. Then you screw it on it with this small screws over here. Now they are pretty small, so don't lose it. Some additional info which I discovered. Now, these are nicely done, don't get me wrong. If you were to place this at the top of the casing whereby the fans are pushing air out as in like exhaust from the top, right? Now the face over here looks very nice, not an issue. but if you were to place this at the front, you should be drawing cool air in. So you have to flip the fan over. If you are to place the radiator at the front of the case itself, the fans right by default is in fact exhausting air through the radiator. It's going this direction. Now, if you want to place it in front, you will need to flip the fans to draw cold air in. If you are to flip the fan over, now, some of you might like it, some of you might not. And majority will complain about this uh, logo over here being very ugly, plus all these uh, lines here. I would much prefer that all this right are covered just like the other end. So it looks nicer. But there is a way, if you find that, cause you see, this is actually, Okay, if you flip the fan and do it this way, right, this is the front of the case and this is the interior of the case itself, you might find that you do not like the look at it. What you can do is, instead of flipping to the interior, right, place it the other way. And make sure that you have enough clearance at the front for your front bezel to cover. And looking at this end, see, you have the beautiful end. Though you do not have the lightings over here, right? But at least, you know, it looks nicer. This is what I feel. And speaking of which, right? I noticed something about the uh, 45 degree angle. There is another purposes. 
Now, the old method of mounting the uh, Galahad 360 at the front, whereby you have this um, hose at the top, and then mount your pump to the processor itself, because when you flip over, right, you're not able to reach. Some of you might face that problem. Having to say so, right, the new version, the Galahad 2, in fact, with this angle, right, see, it will be able to reach, even with a 360. Due to the fact that this gives more length towards your processor. Next, I'll talk about the fin stack. On my left, the white, which is the Galahad 2 Trinity, and on my right, this is the original Galahad. Now, based on the fin stack itself, right, when I measured, now, this is 18 fins per inch, and this is 20 fins per inch, meaning you say it's more fin stack and more absorbing area compared to the uh, previous generation. So this is the improvement they have made. Next will be on the pump itself. On my left, this is the original Galahad, and on my right, this is the Galahad 2 Trinity. Now, be it the uh, Galahad 2 Trinity or the Galahad 2 Trinity SL, the size is of the same. Now, as compared to the original right, on my left, see, the pump height is taller. Now, reason for this, right, okay, before I talk about that, when I flip over here, right, this is bigger as compared to the original. Reason being, right, inside this pump itself, it has a very strong motor and they changed the uh, blade, or should I say the uh, rotation blade within the uh, pump itself. That's why it provides good thermal results or even better thermal results as compared to the original Galahad. Now, just to show you again, side by side, see, this is taller. Next, I'll be talking about the Galahad 2 Trinity SL Infinity. In fact, the specs on the pump, the radiator, let me just take off the fans for a while. The radiator, the angle tube, the length of the uh, radiator, depending on whether you're using a 20, 240 or a 360. For 240, in fact, it's 275 mm in width. As for the full length, 360 will be 395 millimeter. And for the thickness is the same as the Trinity, which is 27 millimeter. The pump itself, all the measurements are the same as in like the top to bottom, the left to right. This is 73 and this is 73. And for the height, is also the same, which is 70 millimeter in height. And of course, the fin sex, as I mentioned, is 20 fins per inch. The only difference right now is only the fence itself, which is the SL Infinity 120. Now, this has a better look as in like, if you were to flip the fan over, right? See, you have a nicer surface. As for the measurements of all this SL Infinity 120 fan, now each measuring from here to here is 120 millimeter, from here to here is 120 millimeter. And moving as the side, the thickness of the fans is 25 millimeter. And if you do add up with the radiator, which is 27 and 25, this total up to a 52 millimeter thick. For the RPMs itself on each fans, Minimum, it runs at 600 RPM, and the maximum is at 2,100 RPM. The last configuration of the Galahad 2 family, which is Stanley's most top tier liquid AIO this year, which is this Trinity performance. Now, the engineering work is much more premium as compared to the Trinity and to the Trinity SL Infinity. Reason being, let me go through with you. Starting off with the fans itself, now, do note that the fans are pre-installed on the radiator itself when you purchase it. I've deliberately taken out just to show you the specs. And in the accessories package itself, right, these fans have a controller which control either high or low. As you can see over here, the specs, there is low and high. If you're running low, right, I mean, if the device is switched to low, you'll be running off at 2300 RPM drawing an amperage of 0.23 ampere and if you switch to high it's going to run at 3000 rpm and the amperage is 0.45 ampere and all these fans are 12 volt dc 
Now, as the name has said, performance, these are non ARGB fans, and the material made on the blade itself are polymer, which is similar to the material made when you see on the Fantex T30 or the uh, P28, or even from the Noctua fan blades. So that's the difference between the uh, quality of this against the Trinity and the Trinity SL. Another thing to take note, also these are non-ARGBs and the measurements from the top, I mean to the side to side is 120. Now from this side to this side, right, is slightly longer, which is 124 millimeter. Reason for this, because there is this fan frame which add the thickness. Now, what are this fan frame for? Now, if I'm going to remove both ends, right, you will see that one end, you do not have the cable. But on the other end, you will see a cable which is hidden underneath this frame here. They want to conceal the uh, daisy chain cable from one fan to another. So that's why they have this frame clip on. And additional to it, right, as mentioned to you, these are non-ARGB fans. If you fancy some ARGB lighting's effect, you can remove off this frame, purchase this side ARGB kit. This is also meant to use on a P28 Unifan, which I'll show you on my previous video. If you guys are curious to know, you can click on the top right-hand corner and to take a look at the P28 Unifans, how they look like and what is this uh, site ARGB kit all about. Now as mentioned, if you were to purchase this kit right, you are given three strips of ARGB like things where you can clip this whole frame to this fan frame. Now when you clip this right, please note, as you can see the daisy chain cable over here right, from one fan to another, these are very thin. Okay. Make sure you place that, place all the cables at the center and not leaving it this way. Because if you're going to leave it this way, right, when you clip back the uh, strips or the frame itself, right, you might just cut the cable. So make sure it's at the center. Once you have done that, you can clip on the strips. This will give the ARGB effects. And when you are clipping on both ends with this strip over here you will add to the thickness from 124 from the top to the bottom if you add on to this strip you'll be additional of five millimeter so both ends adding five millimeter total length of the fence at the side right will be at 134 millimeter so when you're doing that make sure that your case have enough clearance to mount this if not there will be obstacle Take note on this. Now, next, I'll be talking about the uh, structure of the uh, radiator itself. Now, the rest are the same as the Trinity and the Trinity SL, be it the uh, housing, the uh, breaded tube, and the angle, 45 degree angle, and the swivel, these are all the same. Okay? The difference is actually the fin stack on the radiator. If you to notice on the radiator itself, right? In fact, it's dual as compared to the uh, Trinity. See? Big difference. And this dual stack, right? In fact, each stack is 19 fins per inch, but you have dual. You have more surface, even more surface area to absorb heat. And this will be even better for thermal results on high-end processor like your 13900KS or the uh, AMD 7950X drawing at a wattage, high wattage. Just a gentle reminder for this Galahad 2 Trinity performance, it only comes in 360 variant. It doesn't come with 240 variant. So take note on this. Earlier on, I mentioned to you about the width and the um, length of the fan itself. For the thickness, there are some changes. It's no longer the standard 25mm. In fact, the thickness of the fans right now is 28mm. And for the thickness of the radiator, 
is thicker, which is at 30 millimeter thick. So if you total up the fan thickness and the radiator thickness, it gives you a total height of 58 millimeter thick. And for as for the length, it's of the same as the Trinity and the Trinity SL. But for the width of the radiator, it increases. From here to here is 130 millimeter. Now earlier I mentioned about there is a controller in the accessory package. I made a mistake. In fact, the controller is together with the uh, fence itself. And this is the controller, which controls low and high. For low, as mentioned, it's running at 2300 RPM. And for high, which is running at 3000 RPM. There is also a difference in pump block itself. On my left, this is the Trinity or the Trinity SL Infinity. On my right, this is the Trinity Performance. Looking at the top itself, right, they are of no difference in diameter, which is 73, 73. Now, if I were to show you the side, right, there will be a big difference. Take a look at the pump block on the Performance. It's taller, as you can see over here, it's taller compared to the Trinity or the Trinity SL Infinity. Now, the measurements on the thickness of this Performance block is at 80 millimeter as compared to this which is 70 millimeter and if I were to turn to the cold plate itself right it has a bigger surface area as compared to the Trinity or the Trinity SL Infinity now besides this right the uh, bottom section of the performance which is here it's wider compared to the Trinity or the Trinity SL Infinity and also, this retention screws that is mounting to your um, IHS, it comes with it. It's like, it's in place, so you can just screw it in. Else for the uh, Trinity or the Trinity SL Infinity, right? It comes in the, the retention screws comes uh, with the uh, accessory package. This section here is very important if you want to get good thermal results. Now, for those of you who purchase this Galahad 2, be it the Trinity, the Trinity SL or the Performance, make sure when you mount the uh, pump block on the IHS or on your motherboard itself, okay, assuming there's a motherboard behind, the RAM areas over here, the top VRM, the M.2s. So make sure that you place the pump this way with the holes facing your RAMs and not this way where the hose is at the bottom. The ramps are over here. Never, never place this way where the ramps are over here. So make sure you place it, the orientation this way, the hose towards the ram, and I'll explain why. Taking a look at the interior itself of the cold plate, where you can see the fin stack inside the pump, Thanks to Lenny to provide all the uh, documentation and all the blueprints. Now, the fin stack have designed in such a way whereby there are more fluid going through so that debris will not stuck on the fin stack as compared to the old ones. See? The old ones, you have lesser gap or should I say lesser channel for the um, water to flow as compared to the new improved version. Now, earlier I mentioned to you, right? For the pump arrangement as in like, make sure that your pump hose is near to the ram itself. Now take a look at the pump hose over here and the fin stack. So there's one big gap over here. There is a purpose for this big gap, which I will explain later. So why do I say the pump need to be placed near to the rams? And the orientation of this fin stack over here, right? It will be like this. As you can see, the big gap over here and the big gap over here. So when you place um, the uh, cold plate onto the processor itself, right, you it will be this orientation, where the holes, pump holes are located over here near the RAM area. And reason for it, right, now for Intel Gen 12 and 13 itself, take a look at the orientation where you have this small triangle, which matches the uh, processor's small triangle. So when you place it this way, right, and having the correct orientation, as in like the holes of the uh, Galahad towards the uh, ramps itself, you're covering the whole area. 
see the whole die of the uh, processor now what if you were to rotate this as in like having the host at the bottom instead of the side now you you can cover not a problem but you will only cover this section over here so leaving the top and bottom of the die right exposed it's not touching the pin stack at all so that will you worse thermal results so for best thermal result make sure you orientate in a way that the hose is facing towards the ram so that the fin stack right will cover up the whole die of the uh, processor itself now this is for gen 12 and gen 13 speaking about the uh, amd platform right the am4 am5 now this is how it looks like this is the dying area now for amd installation is slightly different whereby the triangle right is located above instead of the lower left intel is actually on the lower left for amd is the top left so when you place it here right you might be saying that oh clear i'm actually covering the whole area even if i have to flip as in like the holes are at the bottom then you're wrong now earlier on i mentioned to you look at this there's an offset and if you look at the am5 or am4 platform itself right i mean the processor itself right look at the gap at the top from the die to this area and at the bottom the die over here this has a wider gap that's the reason there's a gap over here to do the offset so when you're placing it correctly right it will cover up the whole area and if you were to do it this way as in like the pump hose is at the bottom not towards the ram itself you will be only covering the top area which is like this leaving more exposed area of the die without touching the uh, fin stack so at all times as i mentioned be it intel or amd make sure you have the orientation of the galahad pump correctly whereby you have the hose near the rams further on let's talk about the gasket itself now on my right this is the old generation gasket and this is the new one now reason for better thermal performance on the Galha 2 right most likely is because of the gasket itself look at the channel of water flow it's so narrow there is least space to move around as in like the fluid fluid is high i mean this will cause high pressure but lesser fluid going through else for the new new gasket right take a look there are plenty of space for the water to flow so you carry more water in and more water out last but not least the imp the impropeller as you can see these are the stages whereby the original galahad then this is the Trini um galahad 2 trinity and the galahad 2 trinity performance and you might say that hmm propellers are just in propellers what's the difference now the original in propeller right if you look right the hole over here this is where the water seep through there are only limited amount of water flowing through when this in propeller is actually rotating as compared to the galahad 2 trinity the improved version see it's a bigger hole so more water will flow through as in like they scoop and go through and for this it's massive it's scooped through not only the center part but also to the side next i'll be talking about the accessories that come with this aio be it the trinity the trinity sl infinity or the trinity performance starting off with the trinity these are all the accessories when you unbox it it will come with an instruction manual whereby it shows you all the accessories you can tally them with what you have purchased on the booklet itself and the mounting how to apply the thermal paste and such the wirings and of course the connection when you want to use l connect 3. now inside the package you'll be ushered with all these brackets over here this is meant for your amd platform whereby it support am2 all the way to am5 now if you want to make use of the uh, amd bracket itself right you will only need to remove off this bracket from the pump itself 
This is meant for Intel and to replace with the AMD bracket or mounting bracket I should say. Now make sure you place it where the retention screws are facing the pump itself so that you can screw this retention screw on the motherboard and onto your IHS. Now when you're using the AMD platform itself, right, there are no back plate provided. All is needed is just to use the original bracket from your motherboard and to mount your, of course, to apply the thermal paste and to mount your pump. And of course, to screw the retention screws to fasten the uh, pump on your IHS. Let me just remove this off. Now, when you're replacing back the uh, Intel mounting bracket itself, right, make sure that the arrow is facing towards the pump, which is at the top, which you can see here. So mount it this way. Now there's only one direction. You do only apply a bit of force and you will just fasten in place. And make sure you place it this way, whereby this obstacle here right, is facing not at the hose area, but this area. Reason being right, if you to flip and do it the other end, right, you might be able to tuck the uh, cables, but it's kind of like restriction. So make sure that this end over here, where you have no opening is away from the hose and again as mentioned the arrows are facing towards the pump so this is how you how you mount it you'll be also given with back plates for your intel which is the generation 10 to 11 which is the 11 5x or the gen 12 to 13 which is the 1700 bracket and of course this you can use on the latest uh, generation 14 the reverse i mean the uh, revised version of the intel processor you can make use of this bracket too now this is for you to mount at the back of your motherboard where you go through this screws through the motherboard all right assuming this is actually your motherboard so you're placing at the back then to hold this back plate itself right do not forget to remove off this protective plastic so that it will stick to the back of your motherboard and to apply this four spacer now this spacer itself right take note on the orientation this is flat whereas the other one is hollow make sure you place the hollow facing outwards which is this direction See, it will go in place. Now, if you were to place it incorrectly, right, which is this, the flat part facing upwards, one, see, it's loose. It doesn't really go in place as in like faster in place. See, I can hold this. This, if I hold it, it just drop. So make sure you place it this way. And another reason is, if you were to place it incorrectly, which is this direction, the flat surface, when you mount the uh, block towards the uh, back plate itself, right, and to fasten with these four retention screws, take a look at what happened. If I am to screw it, assuming that your block is in, see, there is a stoppage. There won't be pressure pressing the uh, block to your IHS. Else for the hollow part, right, you're able to screw all the way in. So this will push, this will push the pump towards your processor. See? And you look at the difference on the height itself. This will go in. This is protruding out. So this is the incorrect way. So at all times, make sure that the hollow section is facing upwards. Now besides this, you are being ushered with radiator screws. These are meant for you to mount your radiator on the case itself. And it depends on the variant. If you're having a 240 variant, you'll be given eight short screws. Else for the 360 variant, you'll be given 12 short screws. And it comes with three cables. One of these cables, in fact, is spare, which is this. Cause on the uh, fans itself right where you did the daisy chain okay let me just clear off this where you did the daisy chain you have this cable here so in the event if this is damaged right you will have a spare 
Next will be this frame covers, or should I say the ARGB covers, whereby the original looks like this, where you have the infinity mirror. Now I'll show you the ARGB effects later. If you do not like the logo that is showing on the pump itself, right, you can change this anti-clockwise to remove off the, the case itself. Sorry. Yeah, correct. So what you can do is you have two variants. Now, if you still want the infinity mirror without the uh, logo itself, right, choose this. This is for infinity mirror, whereby at the center, it's with the effect and to cover with this frame. Or you can choose everything fusion, which is this, which later on I will show you the effect and how to fasten this now. I noticed that these are plastic clips over here, so please be real careful not to break them. If you break them, you can't fasten on the on the uh, pump itself. And on the pump, right, you will see that you have this hose over here. Match the hose. No force is needed, only one direction. And to fasten it. And this is done. And once it's done, right, next thing is to cover with this frame. Now, on the frame itself, you can see this is wide. This is shorter shorter and shorter so with the white clip face over here this is the white part and the rest are all narrow so all is needed align it properly this is the long part okay cap it over and turn it this is faster in place next will be the trinity sl infinity as you can see all the accessories here partially are of the same as the Trinity unit, which I showed you earlier. Things like the mounting brackets, or should I say the back plate for the Intel processor, the spacer, the retention screws, the AMD mounting bracket, the fusion caps where you have the ARGB effects on your pump itself, and the radiator screws, which are meant for you to screw your radiator to your case. And with this unit, it only comes with one cable, else for Trinity you have three. I'll explain the cable later so take note that on the Trinity SL Infinity right it only comes with one cable and additional to it it comes with a uni controller. This is whereby it controls the ARGB effect on your SL Infinity fans, the Infinity mirror and of course with this cable for you to plug the uh, USB cable to your motherboard and to your controller. This is where the cable send the LConnect3 application commands, the ARGB effect commands to the controller and to your SL Infinity fans. Now, something which I've actually missed out when I was talking about the, oh, pardon me. This comes with it too. This is actually a magnetic pad whereby you tape on the controller so you can magnetize it on your case itself at a hidden area so that you won't see the uh, box itself. Now, as mentioned, I missed out something earlier when I'm talking about the Trinity. Now, be it whether you're purchasing um, the three AIOs, the Trinity, the Trinity SL Infinity, or the Trinity Performance. Wow, a mouthful. It will come with this set of thermal paste, spatula, and the stencil itself. And how does this work? As you can see, the stencil is with honeycomb, shape so what you should be doing is instead of okay the normal way is assuming this is actually a processor you apply the thermal paste and you place the pump or should i say the cold plate to your processor and this will cause a lot of thermal paste mess so what they have actually done is giving you this tensor over here you can make use of as you can see all the honeycomb shape so instead of applying paste to the IHS itself, right? Apply to your pump. And how you do it is remove off this protective plastic. Take this out. Okay, as you can see, you can take this out. I'm not gonna take this out. Tape this tensor on the cold plate. Apply the thermal paste on the cold plate with the uh, stencil beneath it use the spatula 
Okay, you're assuming this is paste on it, and you have applied thermal paste. Spread it evenly, and to remove off this tape over here. Once you remove right, you will see all the honeycomb shape on the cold plate itself. Then you mount it on your processor. So by doing so right, you'll be cleaner and less mess. As for the Trinity performance, it's of the same accessories as the Trinity. The only thing difference is the mounting brackets for the Intel and for the AMD. It's two pieces instead of one piece. So when you place it to the pump itself, right? This is how it's being done. Make sure the hose is facing this way. Then when you clip it on, right, it's this way. So this is for the Intel. You have to clip it at both ends. See, this is done. This section, I'll be guiding you on how to do the connection of the palm, the fan, to your motherboard itself. Now, on the accessory package, I'll start off with the Trinity. You have three cables. And this are all listed on the instruction manual. Now, for cable O, right, which is this. All right, sit down here, this is spare. You need not have to use this cable. Reason being, right, this cable, in fact, it's already part of the fan itself, which is this cable. Let me just remove this, see? It's of the same. So this pair is meant for you if in the event if you spoil this cable, right? You can make use of this. So I'll just leave it back on. Leaving only these two cables that you need to take note. One, which is M. This is whereby you have one end 5 volt 3 pin ARGB connector and the other end this is meant for you to connect to your pump and this is whereby you connect to your fan to your pump I mean to your pump orientation first on your motherboard itself things that you need to use is the USB connector the ARGB connector and one of the fan headers now in some motherboards, there are two ARG, there are two types of uh, RGB. One is ARGB, one is RGB. Now RGB is making use of 12 volt. Do not plug on the four pin. All right, this is 12 volt. Make sure you make use of the three pin, which is five volt. I'll start off with the cables, which is easier. The most simpler, which is the M cable, whereby you have one end. 5 volt 3 pin connector as mentioned connect to your 5 volt 3 pin which is down here once you've done this right next thing is connect this to your pump now your pump have two holes over here okay a speed cable and one single cable so this over here, right, on my right, this is meant for the ARGB, which is here. And when you're plugging in, right, make sure that you orientate properly. Minimum force is needed. So if you f find that it doesn't fit in nicely, right, don't force it, right? Turn the connector around. So with this say, right, I will just plug this in. See, I'm fiddling. If I can't, I'll just turn over. Make sure that you see, it fits snug nicely. So this is done. Next thing on the fan itself, right? At this end over here. Where you have these two connector. Now, one connector is meant for the PWM of your fans, your RPM of your fans. The other one is the ARGB. So with this cable, M, oh sorry, cable N. Okay, now for cable N itself, right, you'll notice that there is this additional connection over here. You can remove this. You don't have to use this. So with this, say, the cable N itself, see, one end to your pump, 
this end to your fans which is one ARGB okay let me just grab the fan connectors okay this is meant for the fan so what you need to do is connect the 3 pin to the 3 pin then the 4 pin to the 4 pin and over at the other end which is this this is meant for you to connect to the pump which is the other socket so once this is done right okay see as you can see I didn't force it in I would just feed it around turn around make sure that it's easily slide in so once this is done right okay these are done I know it's in a mess probably you need to do some cable management next thing to tackle is the pump unit over here so the pump unit itself the cables at this end I know there's a lot but do it step by step you're given with three connectors see a USB connector a 4 pin PWM fan connector and the SATA cable now this SATA cable right I have really had the uh, this SATA cable over here is actually from the PSU itself so directly plug this to the cable over here so what this is doing right is supplying power from the PSU right directly to your pump and to your fans be it the ARGB or the uh, fan rotation and to control the uh, fan RPM and the uh, pump RPM right is making use of this header over here which I already showed you remember the SATA this and the USB so connect this PWM to your fan header it's pretty straightforward and this the final cable connect it to any of the USB 2 header and this is done and when you are doing all this connection right you'll be able to make use of the L Connect 3 application which you will need to download and to install next will be the Trinity SL Infinity now a slightly different connection of the Trinity you will need to have a mindset of having it split as in like the fans belongs to one controller the pump which has a integrated controller to be connected to the motherboard itself I will start off easy with the pump itself so all you need to take care of is just this cable which is one side 5 volt 3 pin ARGB and this is to the pump ok I will put this one side starting off with the pump itself so what you need to do is as usual this 3 pin to the 3 pin ARGB header on your motherboard then once this is done right at this end connect to the pump and take note this is not used anymore because you're using the SL infinity fans so ignore this tuck only this cable in that's it and again no pressure is needed as in like force or such make sure that the uh, connector right glides in nicely if it doesn't just turn it around see it fits nicely then before you fiddle anything okay this is actually the pump connector so I'm going to leave it one side coming towards the fan itself at the end of the fan you have this two plug so this is meant for you to plug to the controller so plug this to your controller be it port 1, port 2 and port 3 or whatsoever now take note for this controller right if you were to purchase um, additional SL fans SL infinity fans you can plug to this controller but make sure that you purchase a single pack and not a triple pack because tri triple pack does come with a controller but the thing is that the connector point right are different so make sure that you make use of the single pack then from this right 
Okay, back to where I am. These are the SL Infinity fans. So one end, which is 4 pin PWM, connect to here, which I'm port parking to port 1. Then the ARGB, I will plug it over here. Just make sure that you do this one step at a time. At this end over here, this is meant for you to connect directly to your PSU SATA cable, which I have it over here. So connect this. Okay, leave it. The next thing you need to take note is this cable is over here. Now for this cable over here, the most important part is this USB cable that sends the signal and the con um, I mean the uh, commands to your controller to control your fans. So at this end over here, this is a micro USB. Just connect to the micro USB with the correct orientation. Again, do not force it. It should be fitting in nicely. See, this is done. Then at this end, plug to the USB connector on your motherboard. Once this is done, right? Now, if you want to make use of the L-Connect application to control the fans, you need not have to plug this PWM fan connector. Okay, but if you choose to plug this in, right, meaning you say you bypass the L-Connect 3 application, make use of the PWM um, software on the motherboard itself, right, then you will need to connect this. This is meant for you to bypass the controller and to make use of the um, motherboard software application to control the fan speed or the ARGB. So if you choose to use this right, plug this to the uh, controller. Okay, make sure that you don't force it in. So once this is done right, make sure you clip it in. Then at the other end, this two over here, one to the ARGB connector. So I will plug which is actually the top. Okay, I'll just plug it over there. I'll just leave it here. Too far reach. Now, this plug to another PWM fan header. But make sure that you know which PWM fan header you're plugging into. Reason being, right? Okay, once this is done, the final step will be this cable over here. As I mentioned to you, right, you must take note on which PWN fan connector you're dealing with because right now you have two different control. The one that I plug in is meant for your radiator fans. So assuming this is CPU fan one, make sure that you know where to control. Then next will be this pump. Okay, the four pin PWN, this is meant for your pump and this is a must to connect. If you don't connect this right, your pump will not pump the uh, fluid from the radiator back to the pump and back to the radiator. So make sure you have this. I mean, as in, like, to connect it. Once done, over at this end, again, you have another SATA. This is to plug to your PSU SATA cable, which I'm going to do it over here. Okay. Once this is done, the last thing you will need is another USB connector to connect to this USB. See, the SL Infinity version of the Trinity itself, right, is having massive cable, but you need to do that step by step. Because, as mentioned, right, the fans are controlled by this unit itself, be it the uh, RPM and the ARGB effects on the fence. Else, the other one, right, which is for the pump. As you can see here, two USB connectors are being used. So do take note on this. 
Now I'm going to skip on the uh, performance because the performance itself is exactly the same connection as the Trinity. Right now I'm just going to take you and show you the Alconet application and of course the ARGB effects on the uh, pump and the fans itself. Just to illustrate the fusion caps, by default this is known as the dual infinity where you have the logo at the center and the infinity mirror I mean the ring itself you have two as you can see and at the side there is this lighting over here now if you do change the cap itself right you can do sync in which you have the infinity mirror at the center without the logo and it will diffuse at the side the last mode will be dazzling or dazzle I should say where all are diffused nicely at the center and at the side see so these are the three modes this is how the L Connect 3 application looks like and I have deliberately took the Galahad 2 Trinity SL Infinity to show you what it's capable of in this L Connect 3 itself. Now, as you can see on my left, these are all the sub menu whereby you can control the fan and pump profile, the uh, lightings for the Galahad 2 Trinity, which is the pump itself, and the SL in Infinity fans over here. Now, starting off with the uh, fan and pump as you can see you can see the profile listed over here this are meant for all the uh, sl infinity fans right now for this fans over here right they are located at port one so i'll just select at port one and you can toggle between fan or pump see when you toggle pump right it will change the profile so as mentioned i will set the fan and i'll set to port 1 then from here right you can set the different profile as you want full speed high speed standard speed quiet so when you apply on it right your fan will react on it as you can see the fan blades are moving if you want to set the quiet and apply you'll see that the fan is gonna reshuffle again so this is how it's being controlled on your SL Infinity fans. Now, if you were to plug in the Trinity fans and the uh, performance fans, right, it does the same as it's actually connected and controlled by this L Connect 3. Now, if you want to control the pump, just select pump. Right now, it's running at PWM mode, whereby the max RPM is 2298. So, if you want to have it fixed, right, for my preference, I would prefer to run it fixed. So with fixed mode, right, as you can see, you can set the max is at 3200 RPM. By the way, when I toggle to 3200 RPM, right, I couldn't hear the noise of the pump at all. So you might want to leave this at 3200 RPM because the flow of water from the pump to the radiator, right, is much faster. So that will dissipate more heat. I mean, the uh, radiator itself to the pump and to cycle within but if you prefer to have it lower right you can always set it down okay let's say i set it about 2700 i apply look at the pump you will just go 2700 see you will gradually go up and if you want it full set it all the way up and click on apply see this is consistent and if you wouldn't want the pump to go continuously and you prefer to run it at PWM right to save energy, you can. You can set it over here. And this is by default. I mean graph from uh, Lenny. So you will just ramp up accordingly to the temperature. So this is how it's been done. I want to apply. See, it ran down. Now this is actually a profile for the fans and the uh, PWM. And you might ask that, oh, um, Cleo, can I actually do the uh, fan profile? I mean, the fan profile myself as custom? Yes, no problem. You can set it to custom. 
and you derive your curve over here or you can key in the numbers as in like the uh, temperature itself and to set the RPM that you wanted at that temperature so this is actually how it's been done now let me just set it back to standard coming to the ARGB profile now as you can see this is to control the pump itself and you have all this styling over here now this styling doesn't do anything much it's just to tell you that uh, what you have plugged I mean the uh, plate you have plugged either the desert mode the, or the sink in where you have the infinity mirror and the side glowing or to indicate that you are having this so right now it's actually having this so I leave it as it is now for the color scheme right as you can see right if you observe this is only controlling the pump alright so you can set this as you wanted see you just follow if you look at the camera over here now you can also set individually as in like um, the center you want it to be probably I would say run away okay it's doing the run away and the outer core itself or should I say the surrounding you can set it something else probably I'll say Tai Chi see it does this kind of stuff so you're controlling the pump only else if you to want to control the um, fans itself right just click on the SL infinity profile where you have this so right now you can just set accordingly okay let me just switch and to show you apply see you will just oh this is static sorry about that I was playing with static now if I do apply see it follows and mind you it's very bright so it's best that you tune it down to 25% is more than enough see it's not so glaring to the eye in fact at brightness right I mean all the way to 100 it doesn't really glare your eyes it's just that to save your energy I mean to save the energy and to have it uh, last longer right on the LEDs itself it's best to tune down the brightness I would normally set it max to 50 and nothing else but most of the time I would prefer to run at 25 and of course you can run through as in like doing the internal call itself if you apply see you can do this you can even switch to the outer call if you want to change color now I'm not going to do step by step and to show you but just a brief introduction of what this can be done now speaking of which right if you wouldn't want to use L Connect 3 you want to use your motherboard application okay which is this mine is actually coming from AS Rock so it's using Polychrome now you might be saying that hey I have actually plugged the uh, ARGB cable to the motherboard itself from the pump unit okay the pump unit to the motherboard and you want to change the color but you can't why now a lot of reviewers have actually mentioned that you know for some reasons they only park the um, ARGB connector to the uh, motherboard and taking off the uh, USB connection from the pump to the uh, motherboard well that's not the way in fact the whole control is being done by our connect so what you need to do is simply go to quick sync okay set this to motherboard link up to sync so right now you're syncing with the motherboard and you're making use of the application so right now take a look if I'm to do this see it will follow this is my motherboard application okay not the L-Connect so it goes accordingly and depends on the flexibility of your motherboard itself you can also set individually as in like this is the overall um, for the uh, fan and the ARG I mean for the uh, Galahad pump now as I show you earlier for the SL Infinity itself right there are two controls so you split the uh, I mean you split the uh, ARGB controller on I mean ARGB connectors on the motherboard itself so this allows me to control individual strips in fact the uh, arrangement right for this 
it's set to RGB one, LED one, and the pump itself is set to RGB. AR, in fact, it's ARGB over here is addressable. Addressable RGB 2. So if I am to select this, okay, and to change the color, oops, to change the color, see, it goes accordingly. So this is actually how it works. And if you want back, it's like, the L Connect 3 to con take control. All you need to do is just under quick sync like thing, turn off the motherboard sync and you go back to the L Connect 3 where you can just change as you want. See, you can just change. No problem. Bounce. So this is how it, how it function on the L Connect Tree application. I would strongly advise you guys to use the L Connect Tree application on this color hard to Trinity, be it the Trinity, the Trinity SL Infinity, or the uh, Trinity Performance. All right, time to wrap up. In fact, I find that this content is rather lengthy as the more I feed with all this liquid AIO, right, the more I feel energetic and excited. Now, I did turbo test on this three liquid AIO, be it the Trinity, the Trinity SL, Infinity, or the uh, Trinity Performance, but I'm not going to show you on this content. That will be on another content, as I think it's going to be lengthy if I continue on. Now, something good about this unit itself when I start fiddling with it, first of all, the impression of this unit is amazing. It's like, it's very premium built things that they have thought of, well thought of, like the uh, angered hose. And this is very useful, especially when you place uh, into a case whereby the fans are obstructing the uh, cube itself if it is straight. So with this angle, right, it did help to provide more spacing and gaps and easy to bend, as I show you, if you are fitting this into a MATX case like the AP201 or the um, D31 or D34, sorry, D41 from Jespawn. So this will be a very good unit. And also the fact that for 360 AIO, right, you're able to place the hose at the bottom as it's angered. So the tube is able to reach to your processor, even with the tube facing downwards, which is good. Now, besides this, right, they have improved on the uh, pump itself, as I show you the interior and how it's being structured. Indeed, with all the improve um, being done on the pump itself, right, when I run the pump at full speed, 3200 RPM, I don't get to hear the noise at all. It's very quiet as compared to the uh, previous version. So these are all the things that Jenny have taken into consideration. Also to the fact that the radiator itself, the fin stack, they have increased the fin stack to 20 fins per, sorry, 20 fins per inch, where it absorb more heat as in like more surface area to absorb the heat. Next thing will be another consideration whereby since it's absorbing more heat, right, you need to dis dissipate more heat. So they have widened the tube. This is one of the improvement that I like so much whereby the theory of it, or should I say the practical usage of it, right, is like more water running through the hose to the pump and back to the radiator. So the circulation is good. Plus you are having a very strong pump. And I'll show you the interior design. It's well done. Now, things that I feel that there should be some improvement. First of all, the uh, changing of these caps here, I find that it's pretty clumsy, though you have lots of functionality i would to prefer i mean the original cap itself i like it very much the dual infinity mirror with the logo so if they can consider you know just to do two cap instead of three caps have it one cap with a logo the other cap with a custom logo for our users to actually paste on or to you know design on something like this 
and I think that would be good or just make it simple as in like one cap having the Dandy logo the other cap without now the next thing that I find it very clumsy which is actually the cabling it's like okay if you do it nicely correctly as you as I've shown you over here right yeah it does show very nicely RGB effects itself but the thing is that there are too much cables and it can be quite confusing and when I start fiddling with the SL uh, Infinity itself right I would do feel that the instruction menu is well prepared for someone who don't read the menu it's all I mean at all right they will get confused and especially for some reviewers that you know there is this uh, ARGB cable that's connected to the motherboard itself so they will be thinking that oh I just plug the ARGB to the motherboard and forgo the L-Connect I unplug the USB 2 I mean the connector and the ARGB will work so these are things that they do not know and I find that you know probably have it simple as in like one cable to connect to the controller and that's it forgo about this uh, ARGB to the motherboard itself so everything to the controller must go to the motherboard so that it will not confuse people anyway these are all my take about this uh, Galahad 2 well done in fact I'm impressed with the results on the thermal results in fact so I'm gonna keep you guys in suspense on that and I will be sharing with you with the uh, thermal results on another video I hope you have enjoyed what I've shared with you and with this say thank you very much to Lian Li to have provided all the uh, liquid AIO for me to feed her with and to share with all my viewers and also to Block Soda thank you very much for the delivery arrangement now if you guys are new to my channel and if you are first time being here right welcome to my channel if you like my content do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button till then take care goodbye see ya